Hey, I just wanted to say it's great to be with you tonight, uh, for me tonight and for you this morning. Um, and thanks very much for having me as a virtual guest. I really appreciate that. So I'm actually in the middle of doing my practice as research PhD in dance studies at Auckland University. And what I want to discuss this morning is an emerging focus in my research, which is developing a concept of an extended body aesthetic, which is a way of thinking about the body which seems particularly relevant in a disability and dance context. For me, an extended body aesthetic refers to the idea that we exist relationally in the world and always in context. So there are no black and white distinctions such as disabled and non-disabled, just a continuum of a variety of bodily configurations that fluctuate according to their circumstances. For example, in a vast dance studio, I'm a swirling, rolling, fast-moving, sheer body configuration that eats up the space, whereas facing a steep grassy hillside, I or we transform into a different kind of extended body with many arms and legs which coordinate to push the said sheer body up the steep slope. The idea is that bodies are malleable and connect through our senses and particularly touch skin to skin and or skin to object and skin to environment. We are embedded in the world and experience ourselves through our connection with it, rather than existing as separate and contained entities. I'm drawing the concept of an extended body aesthetic from a number of sources and most importantly critical disability theorist Margaret Schildrick and Professor Barbara Gibson who had both written about a radically altered body ethics as a specific form of connectivity born out of the experiences of people with disabilities. Sheldrick and Gibson engaged with French philosophers Deleuze and Guattari and their concepts of fluid relational space to describe an ethics of becoming that moves beyond fixed identities. Gibson gives the example of the disabled man who uses a wheelchair, breathes with the aid of a ventilator, receives his food via a gastronomy tube, and speaks through a voice synthesizer. She describes him as a fluid body, not a subject, but a conglomeration of energies. So here a sense of connectivity replaces the notion of dependency to describe the disabled person's relationship with people and with people and objects in their daily experience. Sheldrick and Gibson's model has inspired my research into a concept of the extended body. I've changed the word altered to extended because I want to focus on a sense of bodily subjective expansion in my choreographic work, although this may result in an altered state of consciousness. I'm also considering the extended body from a queer theory perspective and how an extended body might queer the space, disrupting heteronormative and heterogeneous norms. I'm also inspired by French philosopher Jean-Luc Nancy's term called transimmanence, which suggests that instead of existing as contained bodies with fixed identities, human beings exist as a singular plurality always in relationship. He says, there is no meaning if meaning is not shared, and not because there would be an ultimate or first signification that all beings have in common, but because meaning is itself the sharing of being. I'm also influenced by feminist theorist Karen Barad's theory of entanglement. She says the deeply connected way that everything is entangled with everything else means that any act of observation makes a cut between what is included and excluded from what has been considered. Nothing is inherently separate from anything else, but separations are temporarily enacted so one can examine something long enough to gain knowledge about it. So when it comes to rethinking models and labels of dance and disability, 
considering how we might extend our bodies offers a way of rethinking the disability label or at least extending it. <coughs> In this year's special edition of Choreographic Practices, dance academics Anne Cooper Albright and Gabriel Brandstetter add a diacritical slash to the word dis abilities as a way of reflecting on how the prefix dis relates to ability. Albright and Brandstetter suggest that the dis not only marks the other, but indicates a tension and a point of departure. They say that within that tension and point of departure is the transformative potential that disability holds for dance. And within that tension and point of departure is perhaps the place for exploring an extended body. From a disability politics perspective, it shifts the thinking away from modernist ideas that insist on binary distinctions towards more complex and more fluid identities. It shatters the idea of the autonomous individual that functions independently as a prerequisite for its valued citizenship. It's an ethics of respecting bodies as fluctuating beings that have varying degrees of agency in the world. Another element in my research is that disabled bodies more obviously are not neatly contained. Indeed, we seem to be in excess to normative requirements, requiring a plethora of equipment, devices and other bodies in our daily lives. I wanted to reframe this as a more realistic model of inhabiting the world rather than the exception. As a disabled artist, I want to explore what makes me unique in my contextual relationship with the world. For example, how do disability artists extend into the world through their complex configurations of prosthetics and mobility devices? And how do these become an aspect of our creativity or form a foundational filter for our artistic expression? I want to suggest that out of necessity, and choice, we occupy a position of diversity, innovation and multiplicity, challenging the boundaries of form and thinking. So my practice's research is an attempt to move beyond single issue identity politics through exploring an extended body aesthetic that defines not only how we dance, but what it means to dance with an expanded subjectivity, no longer limited by the idea of the contained body. And I put together a PowerPoint of examples of possibilities and imaginings for the extended body through my practices research. Extended bodies are explored physically, politically, ethically and metaphorically from the perspective of a disabled dance artist. So I'm just going to get my PowerPoint and hopefully this all works. Uh, hang on. Hold on. I think I have forgotten. Just bear with me. Um, hang on. Whoops. Um, what I need to do is... I know what I need to do. Sorry, technical nerves. Share screen. Share screen. Okay. <laughs> Getting there. Just when you think you've got it all sorted, you haven't. <coughs> Sorry about this. No, I've just lost my... Okay, Hedy, are you able to help me out at all? Um, you are. You are. 
Yeah. I've got my screen. <laughs> Sorry? Um, I would, I put, ah, yes, okay, ah, okay, now we're good, sorry about that, okay, so, um, uh, this is my practices research, um, examples of the extended body, so, uh, so, okay, so in the first slide, um, this is a piece I made called Ficus Macrophil. Um, and so I've worked quite a lot with um, the idea of suspending my chair. And I'm quite interested in the idea um, of suspension as a displacement. And again, uh, sort of about the idea of querying the space and how you can queer objects um, and suspend their meaning, particularly objects that are uh, related to mobility. Um, so, okay, um, this is the same piece, um, and uh, also in the photograph um, are two collaborators. Uh, from the left, uh, there's Amelia Rubio and Sarah Campus and myself, and we're exploring a Morton Bay fig tree. Um, I don't think you have Morton Bay fig trees in England, but it's an enormous, sprawling tree that's um, over 100 years old. And so we are experimenting with ideas of attachment and detachment. Uh, this is a reflection on uh, this piece. Suspending our arms from the bow of the tree, my body is listening and engaged as we hover in suspension. The felt sense of the inside body attunes itself to the outside body, to the sounds, to the smells and the surrounding textures. There is a sense of layers, Layers of tree floor, layers of branches and tree canopy, insects, birds, layers of dancing bodies, layers of bones and branches mirroring each other, all part of a rich network. Oops. Okay, also um, the same piece. Um, this is a photo shoot of another piece that I made called uh, Pharmacos, and again, just an example, an image of an extended body. And again, I'm using, um, experimenting with the suspension of the chair and different ways of attaching. Another photo of me and Amelia um, and attaching to the chair, uh, which is actually Thai um, shibari style. Okay, another photograph of um, Amelia attached to the chair, another extended body. Studio experiments. That's my leg on the left. Uh, so again, um, as well as the idea of um, extended extended bodies, is also extended bodies of objects. Um, this is the piece Pharmacos um, as part of uh, a a piece I made in the Wellington Performance Arcade series. Uh, so we created a roped web inside a shipping container. So another example of an extended body. Amelia inside the roped web. Uh, another aspect of my research, I worked in a rope net for a while and created a piece in a rope net. I've been working with ideas of suspending my own body. And this is another piece that I made with uh, a Swedish performance artist, Johannes Blomqvist in Sweden. So um, we actually, we, we put this piece together and we used uh, wrappings um, and um, uh, attaching fluids and and um, exploring the idea of um, the inside body and the outside body. Okay. So. 
Okay, so um, and one second. And okay, so I'm back. Okay, so in my choreographic events, the extended body is explored through kinesthetic experience of touch, overlay, overlapping with other bodies and objects, such as rope, and the spaces they inhabit. As a negotiation of relational space, these modalities are experienced as intimacy, permeability, and vulnerability. In an abstract delusian Qatarian sense, they represent a becoming as the movement in the space between elements. I'm curious about how they shift our sense of self through sensation and how an extended body suggests queer or crip pathways to alternative modes of moving and being in the world. The choreographic experiments investigate how rope work, suspension, and ideas of restriction might evoke an extended body aesthetic. They seek to reveal a fluid relationship between the inside body and the outside body. The experiments consider how bodies and inanimate objects might exist as a singular plurality. For example, in the performance event Vickers Macrofall, we explore a sensorial journey of suspension and anchoring in the underskirts of the Morton Bay fig tree in Monte Cecilia Park. We wheel, walk and hang from the branches, are attached and detached, bound and unbound, immersing ourselves in the rich environment. In the performance events, I experience a heightened sensorial awareness that affects and expands my state of consciousness. It's engaging interoceptive and proprioceptive awareness. There is a deepening sensorial perceptivity that affects my corporeal boundaries. I experience myself as more anchored in the body and more receptive to my immediate environment. My heightened sensorial state is an aspect of the extended body. I'm curious about how these perceptual shifts might destabilize corporeal notions and boundaries of the contained self. Does the corporeal moment of connection have the potential for transformation of the body-mind? To contextualize the extended body in dance, physical extension through the body is not new to dance, and particularly in ballet, in my ballet training as a child and as a teenager, there was a strong emphasis on the elongation of the body, extending through the limbs into space, reaching beyond oneself horizontally, vertically and diagonally. The extension is accentuated through the pointed foot and the point shoe. The aesthetic is upright and ascending, and the movement vocabulary is well-defined and contained. Ballet dancers form ensembles, or duets, extending into the space through their connected bodies. From the perspective of, of this research, the point shoe could be considered as a prosthetic and an extended body aesthetic, a stylistic extension through the feet querying the bipedal contact with the ground. Contact improvisation as a postmodern partner dance form has a unique approach to extending into other bodies. Anne Cooper Albright says that the practice reorders our traditional Western conceptions of the body and identity. The sense of the self as an ego that goes forth to make its mark on the world is subtly reshaped into a sense of one's own body as it exists in space and with others. Contact improv is governed by principles of weight, gravity and motion and a rolling point of contact between two or more people. It has the capacity to disorientate and create a space for intimacy, 
where differences are absorbed into one moving body, continually in a state of flux. It's particularly accessible to differently able bodies because of its focus on movement principles rather than a specific movement form. Interoceptive and proprioceptive awareness is enhanced as the dancing bodies negotiate each other's bodies and the spaces in between. Contact improvisation can be performed vertically or horizontally, extending into the surrounding space. And it's been central in my choreographies as a method of exploring interconnectedness and how bodies work together. So a key characteristic of the extended body is its ability to connect and disconnect, attach and detach. As an artist who identifies as being disabled, I'm interested in embodying both these connections and disconnections as an expansive view of disability. Recalling Cooper Albright and Brandstetter's diacritical slash, how can being disabled create a connective potential rather than a reductive circumstance? While the disabled dancer is still relatively rare in the dance studio, physical differences encountered by abled and disabled dancers require a certain negotiation. These physical differences create a certain quality of connectivity. In the studio, dancers are often drawn together to problem-solve choreographic and functional issues. Disability creates another layer of complex complexity in dance practice, an unfamiliar set of conditions that requires dancers to resolve tasks in unfamiliar ways. The connectivity and trust that develops from these demands creates a level of collaboration that is largely non-hierarchical and inclusive. It creates an atmosphere of empathy and a heightened level of listening a co-creation. So now I'm about halfway with my practices research. I'm continuing to explore different sites and situations for extended bodies and new ways of extending into space. So far I've concentrated on rope work, suspension and how ideas of restriction might actually evoke an extended body aesthetic. I'm especially interested in developing the idea of extending into audiences and how I can facilitate that. At the moment, I'm working with bodily suspensions and trying them out in different locations. I'm also interested in the work of a range of other artists, including Rebecca Horn, Stellark, Claire Cunningham, the late Lisa Bafano, Bob Flanagan, Martin O'Brien, and Rita Markello. Finally, I want to consider an extended body aesthetic as having a transform transformative potential in reframing disability and choreography. It seeks to shift polar identities and explore what it means to dance with an expanded subjectivity, no longer limited by the idea of the contained body. It's a point of departure and entrance into querying the space and challenging the boundaries of form and thinking. So thank you. Um, that's my presentation. And um, if anyone would like to respond with questions, I'd be really happy to answer. Suspension. Um, just, my name's Katie. Hello. Um, the notion of suspension. I'm wondering whether it's influenced at all by reflexivity, where you displace, you allow, you suspend the first impression or the first level of understanding to allow something new to come. So in other words, you're displacing the first. Yeah. To allow something new to emerge. So I'm just wondering whether that might be in there somewhere. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, you're absolutely dead on. It is a way of um, not distancing, but yeah, perhaps displacing is a is a better word. In a way, I suppose of um, in a way the object sort of metamorphizes into something else, and so it kind of allows for, I guess, uh, transformation. Thank you. So if there are no other questions, if we could uh, thank Suzanne. And then, Thanks very much. Can we get a copy of your presentation? Is it, is it possible to get a copy of your presentation? Oh, yeah, um, sure, yeah. How would you like me to? Should, can I email that to you? Yeah. 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 If you email it to Hetty, Hetty will distribute. Really inspiring. Yeah. Really inspiring. Great presentation. Thanks. It's, it's been a surreal and um, great experience to be part of the conference. And Thank you. So then I guess. Thanks for being there in person, but yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you and um, good night. Good night. Bye. <laughs>